Okay. Oh, there we go. Hello, everyone. I am Jonathan J. Reinhardt from War Gaming on behalf of Let's Roll Gaming Convention 2020. Visit us at letsrollcon.com and you can sign up for games and events and we have vendors and you can also buy merch if you so like. But today, and the reason why you're watching us right here on this stream is the man next to me because He's way more interesting than I am. He is <laughs> our editor of War Game Soldiers and Strategy Magazine. He's been doing it for a really, really long time. But you know what? Instead of me telling you it, why don't I let Guy tell you about himself? Guy, do you want to take it away? <laughs> okay. Well, I'm glad it works because normally when the um, I'm, I touch technology, um, it generally just goes very badly. So <laughs> yes, um, we're live. My internet hasn't failed. This is this is marvelous. Um, so yeah, um, well, what would you like me to say? I mean, yes, um, I've been very lucky. Um, I managed to somehow um, get this um, job as um, the editor of a um, War Games magazine. Um, thanks to my boss, Jasper. It used to be run by a um, Spanish company, the Fast Test for Fish and Alice. Um, they basically gave it up and it was bought up by a Dutch company. And thankfully, um, um, yeah, can't say publishers. And thankfully, they had the insight um, to give me the resources I need. And um, yes, um, with a professional team, we, I think, have done rather well turning the magazine around. And uh, well, I'm not going to make any comments about popularity or anything else. I mean, we just do a wargaming magazine about wargaming. So, I mean, that's it in AT, really. Um, could I modify that slightly to say you do a darn good wargaming magazine about wargaming? Uh, Am well, I allowed to do that? <laughs> You, <laughs> yes, you are. I mean, I don't like to make such comparisons. I just do the best I can um, for people. So I'm not going to say that we're the best. That's for you to decide, not for me to decide. So, um, yeah, so thanks. And yeah, the check's in the post. Oh, woo thank you. Now yeah. I can go buy more equipment. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> um, I know what you mean, though, because people will talk uh, – and ask about like how they can get wargaming information or other podcasts and stuff. And then they'll say something, maybe they'll compliment me about the show. And I always feel really weird about it because if I say like, oh, wow, you're right. Like I feel conceited <laughs> and like, who am I to say that? Like each person has a different relationship with whatever they're absorbing. And yeah, so like, I think you guys do a great job. I love what you do. And how you do it and i love all the mediums you do it which in particular now during the pandemic it's really great that you have such a fantastic um digital version of the magazine as well ah uh, yes yeah that, that's something which is um yeah been going up and up i mean we've run a um, pdf um um besides the um, print copy but yeah because of the issues with um the post and everything else i believe anybody who's a subscriber now gets the digital if they subscribe to the print copy they also get a digital copy as well so just to make sure that the post is a little bit slow these days. So, That's a good way to do it. Uh, sometimes when people buy a physical copy of something, they wish it could be bundled with the digital and not every place does it. And that's one of the things that I think all of you do that really kind of helps to set you apart. Well, you know, I mean, I'm not going to promise we're going to do it forever. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but right now um, with the, yeah, the current COVID situation, yes, um, we wanted to make sure that people got their fix on time and yeah it's you know it's really the least we could have done really so um yeah um so yeah please uh, do you have any more questions about the magazine that's great so um for those who don't know you you've been uh, editor of working soldiers and strategy for as long as i can remember have you always oh, been editor God. no 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 um there was a guy called um david gomez and um I got to think back, there was also another gentleman. Um, but basically, yes, I mean, I did, um, at one point, um, the magazine was produced half in Spain and half in the UK. And um, the UK manager then was a gentleman called John Kersey, a friend of mine. And um, for various reasons, basically, John um, had to um, give up the role. And so I ended up um, always being asked, oh, do you fancy being the editor? And it's like, well, OK, I'll give it a go. Um, yeah, unfortunately, at that point, um, the magazine was going through a few issues, um, and that's when um, Avistus decided to sell it. And as I said, thankfully, it was uh, picked up by um, Quantum Publishers and my boss, um, Jasper Waterhouse. Hey, Jasper, if you're listening. Um, 
and um yeah what can i say um they brought a new look to the magazine um they certainly brought um a certain professionalism and um we have been yeah trying to improve it ever since so i'm not going to say it's perfect but um i think the most useful thing we've ever had is listening to our readership that's my um comment at the beginning it's a war games magazine about war gaming i mean i looked for the magazines at the time and other um, publications and i thought well you can have a whole pile of history but i can just go to wikipedia or get a decent book now from my perspective i'd rather direct you towards a um, decent book and say well you know um here's the history read the history and i'll give you a brief pricey in the magazine but you're buying it for the war game content so that's what we're um, very hot on i can't say we're perfect um in fact um one of the th um, things which um, readers have pointed out to me is we need to have more smaller scales in there. So um, that is something we're looking at. And the main challenge is, is getting decent photographs of smaller scales. I know it's um, a bit of a lame excuse, but we are doing our best to sort that out. So working with um, readers and also with manufacturers. So I would say not perfect yet, but you know, well, you, know, you never can get to perfection. You know, it's striving to perfection. It's the trying to attain the goal, not the goal itself. A bit like when you're trying to keep fit. You're keeping fit, um, you're always striving to do your best. You're never going to be 100%. You're never going to be Arnold Schwarzenegger or Usain Bolt or what have you. But, you know, it's the, 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 you know, it's the goal. It's the getting to the goal. Gosh, this is live. I can't, I can't get Angus to say, oh, yeah, Angus, can we edit that bit, please? <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's on the podcast. Because in the podcast, oh, yes, we have... Um, yeah, crazy time. And thankfully, Angus gets rid of the worst bits. So, no, unfortunately, you've got me more here. Um, so there you go. Well, I, I don't think it's a lame excuse about the small scale because people don't may not realize that when you deal with small scale, things don't necessarily translate with how you build or paint them or the techniques and styles yeah. you use, and especially when you photograph them. And that might be harder and without the imagery it, it can really make a, an article no matter how well written it can make it turn into a little bit of a dud um not as enjoyable to read yeah. perhaps well yeah i mean um, my challenge is is um again i'm going to mention but i'm going to call it, call it a competitor i like to think of the, i like to think of other war games magazines as compliments as in if you like the magazine you buy the magazine so if you like um for example miniature war games you'll buy miniature war games if you like uh, War Games Illustrated, you buy War Games Illustrated. Um, and likewise, the challenge is, is yes, um, um, WI does have a very high standard regarding um, the photographs. And if we were to compromise with that, um, I think it would hurt us in sales. So, I mean, it's a two-edged street, really, because people want to be inspired by the war gaming. But I've also had comments in the past where people can be a bit put off by it. I mean... Um, we often have um, articles like, for example, by oh, uh, Ruben Torregrosa or Andre Armion, who are excellent painters. I could never paint to their standard, um, although I try. Again, you know, I, I aspire to it, I suppose. Um, yeah, and yeah, people like to see pretty. And so, yes, um, that's a challenge. I mean, not I'm not saying that the smaller scales can't be pretty. In fact, currently I'm painting up some um, 10 mil um, Cold War stuff. Oh, nice. um, for, um, yeah, for Battle Group Norfolk. And I'm pretty happy the way they're coming out. You know, they're not just all green. I've actually got, you know, different shades and stuff. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with those. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah, so, yeah, it, um, it, again, it's, it's, it's a confession that, you know, we need to get um, more scales in there. And I need to um, basically seek out um, decent collections of um, smaller scales and, again, get them in the magazine. Well, this has been this whole renaissance, I guess you could say, for smaller scales now. People seem to be migrating that way uh, more and more, whereas maybe at one point it was something that was, for me anyway, it felt like it was mostly held onto by people who were into ancient war gaming uh, or who wanted to do like a large scale, like a Cold War commander kind of thing. Yeah, I, I think, again, it's um, it's one of those things where the, um, uh, where the war gamers are led by the market. Um, it's the old um, thing um, of who would have ever thought about um, wargaming medieval Spain. And then all of a sudden, Warhammer Ancient Battles brought out this book, El Cid, 
Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, everybody's going crazy for medieval Spanish armies. So, um, yeah, it's, um, I think it is um, uh, a mixture of the two, really. I mean, um, I've seen 10 mil gaming over the years, and well, actually 10, 15, 6, 3 hours as well, and they've all got a lot better. Um, I think, you know, um, 28 may have led the way with quality in the beginning, but now you're finding that um, the other scales are catching up. And some of the um, recent things I've seen released um, to get to review for um, 15, 10, and um, 6 mil, um, the detail has been really superb. So, um, yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, also, um, I suppose it's also a cost thing. You know, if you want to build, um, you know, um, that Panzer division, um, you know, 6 mil is looking very attractive. Um, you've got um, 10 mil and also the 12 mil stuff um, coming out from Victrix soon, which, um, again, looks uh, attractive. Of course, you've got your 15 mil, your um, Flames of War scale, which I must admit I've got a fair bit of. Mm-hmm. Um, Who doesn't? I mean, yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, um, so, yeah, I don't think, you know, 28s have all the, should have all their own way. No, so, I agree with you. Yeah. Now, over your time as editor, you've covered a lot of different games, a lot of different scales, uh, and you have this huge backlog at Wargame Soldiers and Strategy for yeah. the stuff you've covered. Yeah. But what exists in the future? What are some things that you're looking forward to coming up in the next issues? I know you tend to have an editorial plan that you try to follow. Uh, what does that look like and beyond? Well, it's actually quite surprising what we haven't um, covered. Um, for example, I've got some some designs on doing something on um, oh ancient Persia. It's kind of like a flip side of the coin because everybody goes on about um, well, basically, yeah, we have a um, I suppose a Greco centric um, view of um, um, the ancient world, where you know you have this uh, bit about this massive empire which invades a small little group of city states, um, Greece. Um, and I just want to sort of flip the other side of the coin. I want to go back and have a look at the, you know, what made the um, Persian Empire. Um, probably looking at the Ionian Revolt and um, other things as well, because it was an empire for a reason. So, um, well, yeah, until Alexander came along. Um, so, yeah, I, I like always um, exploring the, um, different aspects of history. Um, I like to have um, almost like a play with a topic in a magazine. Like, for example... Um, we did a recent one on the um, oh, Spanish Napoleonics. So I made sure the British weren't mentioned at all because everybody thinks Peninsula War, oh, that's the British versus the French. And they ignore the massive number of battles the Spanish fought, of which they won quite a few of. It's about 50-50. Um, so, you know, it's, um, it's, it's forgotten parts of history. Um, it's like I did the... Um, Medieval, sorry, beg your pardon, the Polyonic Russians. And the Polyonic Russians, we didn't have any French. There was battles against the Swedish, there was battles against um, the, the Persians, um, and there was also, okay, yes, there was the um, the Polish, which technically would have been part of the um, French Empire at the time, but there weren't any French. So, yeah, I do have fun with my um, things. Um, so, yeah, we haven't, um, there's lots we haven't covered. Um, I would like to do a decent one on the whole Russian campaign. There's, um, sorry, this is World War II Russian, I should I just say. And there's always plenty of things we're going to return to. Um, like I can always see us finding something new about um, the American Civil War to go back to, or the American War of Independence, for example, because they're, just, they're such rich topics. They're also popular as well, so it's a logical thing to do. Um, I suppose, uh, let me see, what haven't we covered? Um, We haven't covered the War of Spanish Succession, um, so that's um, one to do. Um, And there are some topics, um, because, of course, the further you get away, there are some topics which we probably wouldn't cover. Um, Like, for example, I'd love to do one on um, Southern American um, wars. Um, You know, the um, Great Pagaran War, um, the Gran Chaco War, um, there's all sorts of little interesting little conflicts, but then would it be enough to do an issue? So, yeah, I think um, the challenge is is um, keeping it realistic. So we might do an article on the Grand Chaco War, but it's not really a topic for an issue, not for a theme. 
Yeah, that's the challenge, isn't it? Uh, trying to find something that you can fill all the pages with that'll be popular enough, but without going back to the same well over and over and over again. Well, yeah, so far, we I think we've done fairly well with that. We have returned to topics before. Um, like, I think, for example, when we turn back to the um, American Civil War, I'd like to look at some of the um, battles in the West, for example, or possibly sieges as well. Um, because they, they do actually don't play a, a big part in thing, in everything, um, and I think also we're looking at um, oh doing a uh, recent um, one we're planning is um, American War of Independence, and I think we're looking at the doing the um, New York campaign. Oh, nice. So yeah, so yeah, there's always um, something. There's always a new topic to come back to. So yes, we haven't. Um, oh. I don't think we've um, covered the same ground twice just yet. Um, like, for example, the current issue we're working on is a bit of an experiment. It's going to be Afghanistan through the ages. So it's going to be um, not just the Anglo-Afghan wars, but um, going back to um, Alexander. Um, so that should be fun. That sounds exciting. I'm actually reading a book right now about, and I'm going to get the name wrong, uh, but about Alexander's conquests as he's heading that way. And it's called something like A Warrior of Thebes, uh, written by Mark McLaughlin, who's, um, you might know the name, he's a game designer with GMT. And oh, wow. okay. he, he writes books on the side, um, but he has this whole series he's doing. It's like a Captain of Thebes or something like that, but it begins with um, Alexander... Uh, just kind of going through Greece and the attack on Thebes uh, there and, and what happens as they start to head into Persia and then work their way into Afga uh, Afghan what we know as Afghanistan and, and all of that. It's quite fascinating. Well, all right, cool. Yeah, well, I'm, um, I'm quite a fan of um, historical fiction. And, um, well, yes. Um, so, yeah, so, I mean, the, the article, um, um, sorry, the issue is going to cover different parts of um, the whole um, but basically, yeah, the whole Afghan experience, I guess. Um, so, yeah, obviously, we'll um, be doing it right. And we're not going to do anything ultra modern. I think we're going to go as far as the um, oh, the Russian invasion in 1979. Um, but, yeah, the idea being that, um, yes, um, but we've got a lot to cover. And if we, we can't really cover it all. And if we're going to go modern or ultra modern, that should really be an issue by itself. So um, um, that's the plan. Anyway, you mentioned about this being the issue that you're working on now. Uh, I think we haven't really said much about the elephant in the room, which is the global pandemic that's crippled economies everywhere, killed too many people. Uh, I'm editorializing there. <laughs> if you feel that's inappropriate to say, uh, say no, so, no, 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 it's, it's being honest. And I always appreciate honesty. Yes, it um, is, um, is incredibly tragic. I mean, all we can do is um, do our best to um, keep ourselves um, safe, really. And you know, protect those um, ourselves and those that we love. How um, so, obviously, this is having an impact on everyone. But how yeah. is it impacting things over at Carol Summary Publishers, and you and Wargame Soldiers and Strategy Magazine in particular? Um, that's a very good question. Um, funnily enough, um, I read of all these people who've been furloughed, and I'm busier than ever. Uh, I see people come, 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 you know, clearing their um lead piles and their plastic piles and i think to myself yeah i'm just trying to think of sort of, of, of um, a word which isn't rude um yeah so yeah we're very busy basically um thankfully we've got a very decent subscriber base um so yeah the magazine is um ticking on well we are going to take a little bit of a hit um because we're going to lose a bit um but i think stores in the us are still closed mm -hmm. um, in the uk um news agents are mostly open um like for example our main distributor in the um, uk is w smiths and i think that they've only got about half their stores open but as um then people are allowed to um basically you know get them um, shopping and also um oh um exercise um they can always um get their um, daily walk go down to their local w smiths pick up a copy of the magazine and come back so yeah I think it's only the USA which has, has been really badly affected um, regarding um, distribution. 
I, I think, yeah, we're still available in Canada, um, to my knowledge. And Australia, New Zealand is also um, good as well. So, yes, um, it hasn't affected us um, too badly. In fact, our subscriber rate has um, gone for the roof. We've had something like a 10% increase in subscribers in about a month, which I'm not complaining about at all. That doesn't surprise um, me. Yes. Yeah. Well, it, it's nice. It's as simple as that, you know. Um, it always makes me worry as well because, um, well, I'm, I always try and get the issue to be as good as the last issue, if not better. But my boss will insist it's better. Um, but it always worries me, you know. It's um, it's always in the back of my mind, you know. I always sort of um, think, okay, right, we've got it done now. Was that as good? What could I have done better? Are people going to like it? I worry at times quite badly, actually. I mean, so far, so good. People do. And uh, we also have um, oh, a little mini survey, which um, our um, subscribers fill out. So every time they get an issue, they drop a, a line to me, and then it comes up in my email. And so, uh, yeah, I regularly go through those um, for um, ideas and, you know, basically to get an idea of what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's good. It is good. I mean, my background is actually in health and social care. Um, I used to be a residential care manager running um, um, a care home. Um, but uh, I basically um, burnt out doing that. So I thought I'd give this writing business a try. Um, not expecting it to go anywhere. And well, somehow it has. So um, yeah, um, for that I'm grateful. And I know there's dangers in um, making your hobby also your um, career. Um, but yeah, so far so good, I think. And yes, um, I think it's now been, I think we relaunched in 2010 with Koran Sarai. So yes, I've been editor of the new magazine um, for, yeah, crikey, 10 years. So yeah, this is quite something. So yeah, I'm enjoying it and um, yeah. So um, yes, um, I plan on doing it for quite a few years to come. Well, that's so, uh, fantastic. Mm. Um, I, I yeah. think it's really good yeah. that since you work uh, from home, I presume, mostly yeah, that right. you're still able to kind of get all this content uh, done and put out and and do all the stuff with the magazine. But um, is the printing at all impacted with any of the lockdowns and that kind of stuff? Um, the yeah, Coansoray is a Dutch company and they do the printing, I believe, in um, Holland. So um, it hasn't been affected, no. Um, so yeah, that's that's um, not a problem. And as far as the um, content is concerned. I am very lucky knowing a lot of good people. So um, again, I won't claim to have any sort of like magic wand. I just steer people in the right direction. Um, so yeah, I am quite an active um, editor. And um, yeah, as long as people um, get into the tenet of um, it's a war game magazine about war gaming, um, then um, then yes, um, oh yeah, basically you, you see it in the magazine. You know, people like to write about their hobby. And yeah, with a couple of tweaks and edits and a couple of pushes in the right direction, yes, um, that's what you get in the magazine. So um, yeah, so yeah, um, as I said, um, no, we're well, because again, um, well, things are now slowly easing in Holland. Things aren't quite as um, good in the UK yet um, because I think we're two, three weeks behind, and likewise the US, of course. So. Um, Yes. Um, so yeah, I don't think we've been um, yeah too badly impacted, thankfully. So yeah, fingers crossed. I think. Yeah. In my um in my real job, uh, one of the things that I maintain, I, I work for um, a local government uh, in oh. their in their library, uh, mm -hmm. and I'm the person who deals with all of the serials, all the magazines and newspapers and all that kind of stuff. And oh, so I, I fought really hard. To get yeah. well, I fight really hard every year for this, but I fought really hard in recent years to get two magazines, one of which was Working Soldiers and Strategy. And oh, I'm well. not, <laughs> I don't know how many public libraries carry your magazine in the world, but we're one of them. And I tell you, it is used so frequently, it's ridiculous how many people uh access it. And I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing for you, and that maybe these could be additional subscriptions or not, but like 
hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of uses per year. And it's astronomical. It's really fascinating to me um, how much people seem to like it. And our community that's served by the library at which I work uh, has a strong, um, uh, I guess, audience, you could say, for military history in particular. Uh, so I oh, think that's why this the nice kind of blending. But uh, the nice thing is because I, I do all this, I get to see the stuff first. <laughs> it's like it comes oh. in. <laughs> And I thumb through. I'm like, oh, let's see what's what's in here, interesting. And and then I, you know, I do all the uh, work stuff I'm supposed to. But it's really nice to kind of get that new magazine smell <laughs> and then get the magazine out. Yes, yeah. That's um. I mean, I think the best thing about my job is getting because you're saying about when you come see it first. Of course, when it comes through on the email, I get to see it first. So um, yeah. So um, so yeah. So I do have the pleasure of um, like example. When Rick Priestley or Richard Clark come send their column in, I'll be the first person to read it. So I think I'm kind of like the um, oh the first um, reader of um, WSS. <laughs> you although, are. Yeah, although I call my boss the um, readers primus. Um, yes. Because he's he, he's um, basically um, he's a wargamer too. Yasper is, and also he hates me using um, vulgar Latin. So um, <laughs> the, so readers primus. I don't know if it's right. I don't care if it's right. But that, that's what he is. He reads it um, first. So, um, yeah. Um, yes. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad to hear that people are enjoying the magazine. And um, do you know what? If they're enjoying it, then that's fine. If they'd like to get a subscription, that's a bonus as far as I'm concerned. But, um, you know, if they're, they're reading it and enjoying it, then, you know, that's um, that makes me happy. That does. And, uh, that makes me, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very proud and very humble, too. So, um, yeah, that's that's nice. <laughs> I think I'll have to... I'll have to use your nickname next time I talk with the Asper uh, and see what he does. Uh, yeah, well, I've got quite a few nicknames, so oh, when you use, yeah, um, I, I will say uh, for me personally, when I open up War Game Soldiers and Strategy, yeah. one of the first thing, actually, the first thing I go to look for is Henry Hyde's column because I'm a huge Henry Hyde fan, and yeah. I've loved his work for as a lot. Yeah. He's he's an idol for me. Oh, well, one, he's a lovely guy. He is. Um, and um, secondly, yes, I'm really happy with the way that his um, columns are um, going. Um, so, yeah, particularly the way of looking at them, the different um, periods and um, fighting out um, different um, scenarios. Yeah, that's very clever. I'm very happy with that. Very happy. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's um, that's something which has evolved over time because at first he was explaining sort of, you know, the sort of basic um, um, wargaming, well, basically basic military principles now they apply to wargaming but now it's actually gone into the more complex stuff yeah i think it's got some um, very interesting because beforehand it was basically for beginners now it's for beginners and um as veteran wargamers so um, yeah i'm very happy one of the things that i think your authors and you have done really well with uh, wsns is being able to present any topic or subject in a way that no matter how complicated it is, it's really accessible for people. And I think that's well, kind of key because I think I, I and I, I presume you find something similar, but if something is too involved, there's a pretty quick <laughs> drop off. <laughs> people. Yes. Funnily enough. Yeah. Um, I do think we do keep things um, snappy. Uh, that's why you'll generally find our articles are about three to four pages. I mean, it's very rare to find anything longer. Because I do think there is a um, danger of, um, yes, of the reader switching off. I mean, one of the nicest compliments I've ever had about um, um, WSS, or WSNS as I like to call it, um, is that um, people will have it somewhere and they'll come back to read it time and time again. So um, um, that's good. Although, yes, <laughs> some of my friends um, have it in the, in the toilet for when they... Um, <laughs> Yeah, so, but they come back to it time and time again. So that, that's going to be good. Um, definitely. Yeah. Some people do their best reading there and thinking too, mm. I'm told. Mm, yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if I may, we, we've received a few comments and questions in the chat, if I may oh, share some of them excellent. with you. We're more than happy. This is, this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. That's okay. So. I'm ready. We have Daniel here who says that he loves WSS Magazine and he says, I would be delighted to review books for you at some point. Keep up the great content. Well, um, how how would someone review products for you? 
Well, basically, um, what we want from somebody who's um, reviewing stuff um, for the magazine is we don't want um, somebody to praise something. We want someone to be honest about something. I like to think of it as being objective, not subjective. It isn't whether you liked a book or didn't like a book. It's whether that book is actually useful to you as a war gamer um, or inspiring to you. Um, so as far as um, being a viewer is concerned, well, drop me a line at editor at wssmagazine.com and we'll see what we can do. Um, so, yeah, it's um, entirely in the moments of possibility. I, I think you described it perfectly uh, when I'm doing my show, we're gaming recon. Uh, yeah. And often if he, he's being in a, a funny mood, my uh, friend and co-host Adrian Benson, uh, if we're talking about a game, I, I'm just going to pick black powder because black powder, if we're talking about black powder, I'll be like, so let's talk about it. What do you think about it? it will be like, it was good. And, I, and so then just to kind of drive home the point, basically what you're doing, but more succinctly what I do with him is I say, okay, that's it. That's a wrap folks. Thanks for listening to the show. We're done. And, and then he just kind of looks at me, well, I thought you'd say something. It, and it's like you said, it's the why. It's uh, how can it be useful and how can it not that really matters for people to help with their decision making. And uh, I, I think it's really great when you have someone, whether it's Daniel or someone else who's reviewing products for you, and you guys do it really well. So however you pick your reviewers is just spot on. And I, well, um, to be amazing. honest, um, we do have or uh, we'll have had issues in the past. We do have to make sure. I think any good um, review has to have a little bit of critique in it. Mm -hmm. um, because nothing is ever um, perfect. And the worst thing you can have as a reader is have somebody going, oh, that was really great. Oh, it's really marvelous. It's really lovely. Because, you know, that doesn't tell you anything. I mean, like, for example, if you go back to um, Black Powder, um, the comments you can make about Black Powder are, well, okay, it uses D6. It's got um, two-step resolution, which is uh, relatively simple. Um, it might not be as complicated as other games, so therefore people could criticize it for detail, but mm -hmm. it allows you to get um, a large battle played in a relatively short um, length of time. Of course, the other critique you could say is, again, it's definitely um, one for big battles, not for smaller battles. But of course, what we do locally is we just use smaller units. So yes. our regular unit is like, say, six cavalry instead of 12 cavalry, for example. Um, so, um, yeah, so... That sort of detail it doesn't say whether I like or dislike the game, but it gives um, the reader a very good idea of what they're buying. And they're going to think to themselves, okay, so it plays like that. Well, that sounds interesting, and I'm looking for something which might be quick, and I do have a large Napoleonic collection. I'll give it a go. Or somebody else might turn around and go, nah, I don't like that idea. I want to do Napoleonic skirmish, and that's not going to work for me. That's the information which people need. But, um, you know, whether I like a game or dislike a game, is okay it's it's kind of useful but the whys and the wherefores like you said that's the importance absolutely we also have uh someone else watching live court who says yes smaller scales uh court's yeah, actually a friend cool. of mine and he loves yeah. uh 10 millimeter uh stuff from old glory oh excellent okay well yes some court we are going to do uh, more in smaller scales um so um but funnily enough, um, I happen to be working on um, some um, 10 mil um, Cold War uh, as we um, speak. Because this is also uh, my painting desk. I need to clear it up already. <laughs> so, um, yes. Um, yeah, absolutely. Because it's supposed to be, again, there's, there is a lot of focus on the 25, 28s because they do look pretty. Um, you know, I'll be quite frank about that. And they're also relatively easy to get decent photographs of. Um, so yeah, but we are working hard to make sure that yes, it's um that all scales are uncovered, and particularly um bigger battles. Um, so um, I would like to do more sort of um, grand scale things in the um magazine again at ten mil, six mil. I mean, um, a friend of mine, Steve Jones, has done this in the past. He did the Battle of um, Wagram in the magazine with um some beautiful six mil. They were so beautiful. They were shaded and highlighted. Still highlighted. Oh yeah, he's an amazing painter. Oh my goodness. This, yeah, this is this is somebody else who makes me just cry occasionally. It's like that's so well painted. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we need to get um get back to that and to cover more scales. So um yeah, thanks for your comments, Court. And yes, we will be doing it. 
that's why I've realized I don't really like painting miniatures. I prefer painting and making terrain and building MD MDF. So I pay people to paint my miniatures for me, and I'm not afraid to say it. Uh, I actually I have a whole yeah. bunch of 10 mil stuff. I think it's AWI stuff um, that yeah. I, I commissioned a painter to do. And I tell you, the best money I ever spent. I was so happy when it came. And like you said, they didn't do inking and shading, uh, but multi layers and block painting and all these colors, just yeah. gorgeous. Yeah. Um, yes. we, we have another comment question here, also uh -huh. from Daniel, who says, I'm curious as to if the WSS YouTube channel will have more videos put up, as I love the painting videos and would love to see more. I'm with them there. I love the painting videos that have been up. Ah, uh, Christy's work, yes. Yeah, she, she's uh, wonderful. Christy, yes, she is. She's a great uh, painter. I think the main challenge um, with um, Paul Christie has been time. I mean, effectively... Um, we have um, four magazines um, to produce, and um, um, Christy does the um, layout um, for each one of them. Um, so I think um, it's basically been put to the side um, simply because there's an increased um, workload um, in the um, company. So um, I sincerely hope that um, we do get that um, sorted. I know there are plans afoot. And uh, then Christy will have some more time and yes, then you will see um, more um, YouTube um, content from her. Um, and also, I think we could do more with the um, YouTube channel, um, like, um, for example, unboxing, that sort of thing. So I do think um, it's something we could do with expanding on. So like, for example, we, know we only um, picked up the um, podcast. And we thought, oh, well, other people are doing podcasts. So how could we do a podcast? Um, and then we went through and analyzed what we thought was good and what was um, bad about other podcasts. And um, yeah, then we came up with our own, which is again, like the magazine, short and snappy. So we try not to go over 45 minutes, for example. That's good. Yeah. So um, um, yeah, sorry. No, it's just, I was gonna uh, ask if I could share a bit of advice about the unboxings uh, for you. Oh yeah, please. please um, do, so yes. that uh, we've been more recently expanding into a lot of video content here. We're giving recon on uh, putting up on Facebook and on trying to grow our YouTube channel. And one thing that uh, we've always done is unboxings and for whatever, well, I, know, I think I know why, but uh, for whatever reason, many people feel like they don't like them. They think it's weird. And yet they are incredibly popular, especially if you put them out around American Thanksgiving into the Christmas winter holidays. Oh, right. I see. Yes. Because people so are using them, I think, to see yes. what's going to be there and then as a way to uh, pick what gifts to buy for people. Excellent idea. Good so idea. you might want to think about doing a bunch, stockpiling them, and then releasing them around that time. Just a suggestion well, for anyone who wants to do some YouTubing. Consider that stolen. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're well, well, and see, uh, I presume a lot of people understand this, and maybe they don't. But this whole wargaming community, it's small. Like, it might feel big, but it's small. Mm -hmm. And so, like, you were talking about some of the other magazines out there. And mm -hmm. when I think of all the wargaming magazines, they're all different enough and all have do one thing that's really special that no one else does. And so Absolutely. I don't view it as competition. I view it as complementary. And the same with podcasts or videos. I mean, there's a million YouTubers who are doing painting videos, doing unboxings about stuff, or like you guys do uh, the WSS podcast, which I, I have to say, I used to listen to all the time and I don't anymore, not because I don't like it, but because I've made a point to try to limit my wargaming input from other people because I, I don't want to uh someone has said oh like oh, someone geez. else did this the coverage and yours is so similar so you did and i'll be like no i don't listen to any of that but there's mm. room for all my point is there's room for all of this because we all do it differently enough no matter what the show is or the youtube channel or the magazine there's something for everyone and i think we're all really very friendly about it i don't think anyone's like i really hate that person what they do Arr. i think we're all it's like yay this is yeah no, yes, um, exactly. I'm just, um, yeah, I don't, don't have any um, um, time for sort of uh, ranting and raving about stuff. Yeah, it's a small hobby, and um, I do my damn just to get on with everybody. So, um, yeah, I think that's really important. And, yeah, you, you're dead right. You know, there's lots of um, lovely um, content out there. So, um, yeah, the more the merrier, I say. 
I think so too. Um, if I may, may I take a moment, uh, if you, uh, you're not going to have it up in front of you, but if I were to show people the War Game Soldiers and Strategy website, because it has some information about subscriptions and things like that on it that other people might like to know. <laughs> I'm going to do that now. <laughs> Sorry, is that okay? Yeah, it's perfectly fine. Thank you. It, it's always, I, I'm, as you know, you have to be a shameless self promoter. <laughs> uh, well, that, that doesn't come naturally to me. So, uh, um, yeah. I don't like to promote myself, but I do love to promote other people and things that I love. And working soldiers and strategy is one thing I love. So uh, people watching live can see uh, here uh, the page here. So you can actually go to wssmagazine.com and it'll bring you right here um, to the longer URL. And I love that you have some cool illustrations up there and you have this nice subscribe button. And mm -hmm. Uh, it says here, uh, and just you will correct me because you are the expert here. Uh, it says it's sixteen point four five euros. Is that right for a three issue subscription? Yes. So that covers what six months? Is it? Uh, yeah, because we're um, bi monthly. That's um, three issues, six months. Yes. And then you could do digital only for um, eight euros. Yes. That's awesome. That is very very affordable. And I would well, say we, we, yeah, we, we try to um, keep it affordable. Obviously, you know, um, we, uh, um, it is um, a um, business. So, um, yes. Um, so, um, yeah. Um, yes. Well, I would say there's almost no reason, no major reason for people to at least give it a try if they haven't subscribed already. And if you are to just renew your subscription, because there's all sorts of great content here. And I mean, this is just a landing page, uh, but there's even more. And people can actually go here, right? And they can order. Is this true? You can still order back issues if people want print oh, yeah. issues and stuff. I, th I think um, pretty much all the back issues are available. I think there's only one of the um, Spanish issues which um, aren't available. Um, yeah, and so uh, yeah, we do try and um, keep the um, content um, different for each issue. So if you're an ancient war gamer, there's always going to be an ancient article. Um, if you're a medieval war gamer, there's always going to be something of medieval of interest to you. If you're into your um, um, black powder period, there's always going to be um, a black powder, and there's always going to be a World War One, World War Two, or modern um, article as well. In fact, there's generally always going to be a World War Two as well as some something else. Um, these are the you know, the most popular um, threads in war gaming, so of course, naturally, we cover them. And then you happen to do something that's really interesting and i know it's not technically under your purview completely um because i've talked with Jasper about it uh numerous times but you do the great wargaming survey uh do you want to talk a little oh, bit about yes. that well yes um again it comes down to um finding out what people um, want and so um Jasper came up with this idea of doing the um great wargaming survey which is basically simply um, a, a, a questionnaire asking people about their hobby, how much they spend in it, um, what scales they play in. Um, because again, it's objective, not subjective. You know, whether you like um, um, Old Glory, whether you like um, buying Empress, whether you like buying um, from Warlord Games or what have you, um, we're more interested in the nuts and bolts. Is it World War II you're into? Is it uh, Wild West um, Cowboys? Um, that sort of thing. Is it um, naval? And so, yeah, the um, survey actually produces very interesting data um, on the hobby, or what people collect and what have you, and their particular interests. So it's useful for us um, as a tool because then we can make sure our focus in the magazine is on the interests of the um, average gamer. And also, again, it also shows that while um, 28 mil is, um, you know, I think it takes up something like about 45% of the interest in the hobby, it still isn't by far the entirety of the hobby. And also of interest, when you see a new game come along, you see an upsurge in those um, periods um, in the following surveys which um, means that, yes, I do believe um, that, you know, 
it's the old um, Field of Dreams thing. The field <laughs> is and they will come. As in, um, um, all our games brings out cool seas and also um, their um, Black um, Seas um, game. And lo and behold, naval becomes more popular. <laughs> Which probably also feel, feeds into other naval games as well. So, um, yeah, um, I do think definitely um, yeah, if somebody has a cool idea and brings it to the market, then you are going to see an upsurge in that particular period. So, um, yeah. Now, um, I'd like to give anyone watching live a moment to uh, input any questions or comments that they would like me to share with you. And just while people take the time, if they want to do that, uh, I do have okay. a question for you, which you may not want to answer. <laughs> that's what I'm going to ask anyway, because oh, that's what I do. Yeah. Um, so I, I like open questions. It's, it's always <laughs> open. So as an editor, uh, you have to be, you, you would strive to be impartial and unbiased as much as possible towards the topics yeah. you're covering in the games and all that kind of stuff. If you can yeah. put your editor hat aside as a gamer, <laughs> do you have any okay. games or uh, time periods or manufacturers or, or anything, products that you find you just really enjoy that you go back to again and again or that you really like playing or being around and in, in, involving yourself with and why? Okay, that's a tricky one. Um, yes, it is. <laughs> okay, okay. So in that case, if we're talking about my own um, personal um, hobby and uh, wargaming... Just guide um, the I gamer, not guide the editor. Yeah, guy, yeah. guide the editor tends to play a lot of different games. And sometimes guide the gamer suffers because guide the editor has a deadline and has to make sure he's actually played through a game. Um, because I always like to take um, a, a lead role when it comes to doing the Let's Plays we have in the magazine. Mm -hmm. um, mainly because, uh, well, a long, long time ago, when we first started doing um, those sort of reviews... Um, one of my reviewers made a really basic error when it came to um, uh, describing how a game worked. Thankfully, I'd read through that um, game and I'd realized the error he'd made. And thankfully, I managed to change it before it got to press. Mm. But um, that would have made us look um, quite foolish. Um, so, yes, so I do tend to play a lot of games um, just so I can make sure that the content of the magazine is actually um, correct. But... Putting that aside, um, I like playing um, World War II. Um, this tends to be um, bolt action, mainly because, well, currently bolt action, I suppose is the right way of saying it, because it has been, um, oh, crikey, going back um, far enough, I used to play a lot of rapid fire. Um, I suppose um, it's down to what um, my local group plays. And currently, um, the group I, well, okay, not that anybody's been to a war games club in a while, but um, my um, local club um, has a lot of um, younger players. Um, and of course, um, Bolt Action is a stepping stone away from, say, your 40Ks of um, this world. Mm -hmm. So it's something they can um, grasp easily and um, get playing. Um, I also um, play um, Chain of Command. Um, and uh, yes, um, also um, I've played um, some Flames of War. In fact, my 15 mil has been... Um, slightly um neglected um although recently that's had i've dusted them off because of course i've been playing um what a tanker um by um two fat lardies which is an excellent game i must say um so yeah i play a lot of bow action because that's what people play locally um and um yes what a tanker um um i have been playing also recently i'm um, going back which is this is kind of like um Oh, a bit of, I suppose, reminiscing, really. Um, my local players wanted to get into doing some ancient um, gaming. So um, we started up the idea. Unfortunately, it's been put on hiatus with the whole COVID situation. Um, but yeah, we're building ancient armies and we're trying out different role sets with them. So um, currently, um, well, funny enough, it's an old game of mine, which, um, again, I used to have a very tiny um, part in. Um, Warhammer Ancient Battles. Yep. Um, out of print now, um, but you can still get hold of copies. And we've been playing the Roman and Barbarian lists out there and really enjoying ourselves. Um, so, yeah, um, we have been doing some Hell Caesar as well. Um, and I think we're probably 
well, I'd like to take them through um, other games as well, like Sword and Spear and um, Sword Point. And then there's, of course, Mortem McGlory. Oh, I think we have, I think Guy may have been frozen. And he'll be back in a moment. Uh, until he does, I do just want to let all of you know that you can head on over to wssmagazine.com to get your subscriptions, sign up. Uh, and you can also, uh, from there, go to the main car and summary publishers website and check your account and interact with them for all that kind of stuff as well. Just checking to see if guy is popping back. Um, it looks like he still might be frozen. Uh, and um, I will go ahead and just remind all of you that this recording is being saved. Looks like, unfortunately, guys had to drop out. Uh, probably some technical difficulties. Uh, that this recording is being saved. It will be available to watch at any point that you so choose on the Wargaming Recon Facebook page, Wargaming Recon YouTube channel, and it'll also end up being on letsrollcon.com, so you can get at it there. And then I'd like to take this moment to also let you know that there's some other cool events coming up here at Let's Roll Con. So and just a matter of minutes, uh, I'm going to be interviewing York Bender, who's owner of Things from the Basement. Uh, they create all sorts of cool uh, HGF and MDF terrain, and he's going to be giving us a sneak peek into his brand new upcoming Kickstarter for Farms of Gettysburg. So for all of you who are into American Civil War, this is going to be 15 mil and 28 mil terrain, so that's at 2 o'clock. Um, Alvaro Ariz, who is co-creator of Clash of Spears and co-owner of Fighting Hedgehog with his brother, is going to be doing a live stream uh, demo game at 2 p.m. as well. And then at 3 p.m., it looks like Guy's coming back in. Hello, Guy. It looked um, like you had some technical problems. Yes. No, it's the um, local internet. Um, it's been um, a little bit, um, well, I'm right at the end of the line, you see. Um, I live um, down in a house down in the country. So, unfortunately, there's a long telephone line from where we are to the exchange. So, the internet speeds aren't great. And, unfortunately, I think also with um, oh, basically a lot of people being at home, the um, bandwidth has um, you know, basically yeah, been getting shorter and shorter. And um, yeah, well, I was afraid that was going to happen at some point, but thankfully it fixed it so quickly enough. Yeah, no, it went really well. And I was just taking a moment to uh, remind people about getting a subscription uh, to oh, Working right, Soldiers and Strategy. And um, uh, we have someone in the chat court saying, Guys frozen, God help him, not like Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm afraid I make a very bad hand solo. Oh, um, man. Um, yeah, I, I've got a small cat, but I don't have a Wookiee. So, um, <laughs> if people want to stay up to date with uh, all the things that you're doing, because you were talking about some of the games that uh, you play and some of the ancient stuff that you want to do as well, uh, if they want to just kind of keep up to date with you uh, and your gaming adventures and also you as editor and all the stuff with War Game Soldiers and Strategy, what are the best ways for them to do that? Um, probably via my um, blog. I do a blog on the um, Wargaming Souls and Strategy website, um, which is now being aided by um, um, two friends of mine who are also putting up um, their own content. Um, I have a friend called Chris King, who's um, one of the gentlemen that we're introducing to um, the um, ancient um, gaming. Um, although I didn't get around to also speaking about my last um, um, favorite period, but I'll, I'll talk about that later. So um, just, just um, bear that in mind. So, um, yeah, so um, he's also joining in the um, crazy. Um, Oh, um, four emperors um, campaign, which is basically Rome, um, and of course you can take um, barbarian allies. So he's decided to go for a purely um, Celtic force. So um, lots of um, Britons um, charging um, madly, uh, which is fun. And there's uh, my friend Mark Backhouse, um, who is yes, in, is I think one of the most innovative people I know. Um, because he's currently doing um, a game for the siege of Constantinople. Oh, yes, and this is in three mil. <laughs> oh my god! Yes, so he is actually doing all of Constantinople. Um, so you're going to have the Turkish forces attacking the um, um, the walls, and you've also got um, the Turks at sea as well. 
you've got the whole business where they actually pull ships across the land so they can attack um, from um, inside um, the um, Constantinople's waters because I think they had the chain going across the um, straits. Um, yeah, so again, he's uh, quite innovative. He did um, the siege of Portsmouth and did it again in three mil, um, which was um, quite amazing. And so, yeah, he's now doing Constantinople. So, um, yeah, that, that is, that is um, well, I've seen some of the models he's been using. And yeah, that is going to be quite a sight, I think. So, um, yes. And so, yeah, my um, passion, I mean, there is one passion I have, which um, I never thought I was going to get into. And I think I've got to blame um, the Perrys for this, um, because they were the first um, people to come out with um, Napoleonic plastics. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Now, I always looked at Napoleonic and I thought to myself, I'm never going to get into Napoleonics. You've got to paint a whole pile of figures. Um, you know, it's just a silly idea. And I never can afford that. And then, yes, they started releasing their um, plastic sets. And then Victrix did as well. And I'm a great um, converter. So I was taking bits from the Perry sets and adding them to the Victrix sets and vice versa. In fact, I have some um, who I call the Perry Twix, which <laughs> is the yeah, a whole bunch of British. And because the, you know, the poses of the Perry tend to be a bit more sort of like, you know, regimental and straight, while the Victrix ones are more sort of like fluid. So, um, so I've managed to, I've managed to um, convert those um, quite well. Um, yes. And so um, to cut a long story short, sorry, got a bit of hay fever. It's not That's so okay. Uh, yeah. Got a sniffy nose. Um, yeah. So, yes, Napoleonics um that's been um yeah it's just a game i keep returning to and having fun um i have a a dear friend of mine called um malcolm um sadly he's self-isolating he's um 74 mm -hmm. so we're not going to see him anytime soon but he's got um a large collection which is older than me um dating back to the um, 60s um so yes it's um Quite amazing. It's lovely to get those old miniatures out again. And um, yes, and he'll quite happily play me um, with games of black powder. Um, my friend James Orm as well is a big um, black powder fan. And of course, um, we played, let me think, a couple of years back, we did uh, Battle of Linny. Or, or people call it Ligny, but my boss says it's Linny. So my boss is right, so it's Linny. Um, so, yeah, we had some um, great fun with that with about um, 5,000 figures on the table. And as it happens, um, a certain professor, Tony Pollard of Glasgow University, saw the article and thought, oh, what a great idea. I wonder if we could do that with Waterloo. And so, yes, and of course, they did. And I was very fortunate to be a small part of the um, team which brought that term together. And yeah, I covered it um, for the magazine, and it was simply amazing. 22,500 figures on four separate tables fighting out Waterloo. That was, yeah, truly amazing. Yeah, that um, was a sight to see. Oh, yes, it was a sight to see. Um, yes, and so, yeah, um, that the game did actually go um, historically in the end with um, Napoleon almost being captured. The uh, British cavalry broke through um, the um, French line at one point, and we're literally one move away from um, capturing Napoleon. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that was, um, yeah, quite crazy. Well, and uh, got a great thing. Well, Guy, I just, I want to thank you for being here with us and oh, chatting uh, with everyone here for a Let's Roll oh, convention. And yeah, I do, sure. well, just, for inviting. I just also wanted to come over to remind everyone that uh, at two o'clock, uh, I'm going to be interviewing York Bender from Things in the Basement about his upcoming Kickstarter, uh, Farms of Gettysburg, which will be in 28 and 15 mil. There'll also be um, Alvaro Ariz, co-creator of Clash of Spears and co-owner of Fighting Hedgehog. He's going to be doing a live game, a uh, demo game of that. And then at 3 o'clock, Adrian Benson and I are going to be doing our live podcast recording of Wargaming Recon. Remember to check out letsrollcon.com for all the events, games, and check out our vendors there. And you can also buy merch and everything. So thank you again so much, Guy, for being here. Oh, and um, thank you I hope people take the time to 
head on over to wssmagazine.com and to follow up with you on your blog and all the things that you're doing. Thank you again so much. Okay. Well, again, thanks for inviting me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.